In this tutorial, we'll just take a quick look at a simple animation that I just did of this scene where now it's going to animate between these image textures and these procedural textures on it. I didn't do a very high resolution animation on it. So let's take a look at that first and then we'll come back and uh, look at a few other things real quick. All right, where is this thing? Okay, so here's the animation and you can see that it just cycles between the image textures here and it's cycling between the glass and the diffuse textures and between the Veroni and the gradient procedural textures at the same time. So it's pretty interesting. I mean, you could cycle between transparency. You could you can do all kinds of things. So it's very, very powerful. All right, so now that we've seen that, now there's a couple other things that you can, that I haven't showed you before. You, you may know about them, but just in case you don't, there's uh, up in here, under the properties window here, right here, properties, like this, right? You, you know, you can select objects up in here because sometimes it's hard if you're in Blender, rendered mode, I mean if you're in cycles rendered mode like that and you have these named which I don't have at the moment which I, of course I should like I've taught before um, you don't know how to select it so let's just do this let's go look in material mode real quick and see what that is that is called cube 02 and that's called cube.01 and you know when you're in rendered mode you can't just select and know which one you're at but you can always get it up here if you know the name then you can just left click it up there and then you know you have access to it and you can move things around in the scene but there's a couple other things that are in here that are nice if you haven't seen them before these three buttons over here if you highlight them they're pretty obvious restrict visibility so if I just turn that off that object simply doesn't show but that's only in the viewport and then you can also affect the visibility here in the render so you can turn this off so when I turn that off that won't render even though I see it in the viewpoint it won't render and then this one here you can same thing you can't select it now at this point so if I was to go over here in material mode I can't actually select that object I can select that that and that and so so those little details help and then another thing is this surface here that I created was is a fractal surface and I've mentioned this in a previous lesson I did a lesson on creating a fractal surface but I'm going to repeat it here just in case you're not familiar with it we'll just make a little fractal surface over here I'll go into material mode real quick and we'll just place another little plane in the scene it's a powerful little tool scale it up like this and then you just go in here and subdivide it W subdivide and in the previous tutorial I had mentioned you could press F6 and oh I guess you still can I wonder why that didn't work well yeah you still can press F6 okay so you can do F6 and you can get your fractal cut down here you can see how it changes it or you can change the number of cuts up here I thought they had taken that out but I guess not all right, so it's still there, but you can also get it through this menu here. You press T, and then down here, you have the same thing available. Let me move this up out of the way like that. So there's your number of cuts here. It always allows up to 10, because this can really start hogging memory. Let's see, there's uh, faces, 121 faces. Yeah, you'll see what I mean. So let's kind of, you know, make it a little noisier like that, and then say OK and then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to subdivide one more time and now I'm at 120, now I'm at 448 faces 1,089, 1,900, 3,000, 4,300, 5,900, 7, 7, 98, 12,000, 14,000, right? A lot. We're talking a lot of faces but you see it generates really nice surfaces. I mean just fun stuff. Can't, I mean how can you beat that for this kind of scene? Let's just see what it looks like. We'll give it a little we'll give it a texture and render it. Just something. Let's give it a hmm, let's see what we look at. Yeah, okay, yellow is good enough, okay. And just because we'll go into the node editor and I'm I just out of curiosity, you know, I'm just kind of curious. We'll just turn this into a uh, we'll use a glass shader instead. Just see what it does. Or maybe we'll, no, oh, okay, we'll make a mixture of the glass and the diffuse, but we'll make it mostly glass.
and there's glass down here so it's got to be mostly like that it'll be our yellow color down there maybe our diffuse color will be a purple uh, balance the shadow balance the colors a little bit all right and let's see if we can move it into the scene well let's see if it's even anywhere close to the scene no not quite so I'm just going to move it right over the top of everything just for the moment just because I want to see what it looks like all right Uh huh. So you can see, of course, the purpose of the lesson is to teach you about fractals, but this is a, gr a great way to do things. I do this a lot. I actually just add materials on top of materials. And let me go, let's do this. Let's check the rendering on this real quick. See where we're set. Oh, render is only at 30. We're going to crank it up to 150 just because, and we're going to see what it does. And We'll go full screen. We'll press F12 and we'll just take a look and see what happens. It's, now it's really thinking. Let's kind of give us an idea. This is a lot of uh, memory, 20 megs of memory, it says in here. Total number of faces in the scene. 18,742. We'll see what kind of time it takes on here. Uh huh. Yep, looking pretty nice. Pretty clean. Right, so, you know, this is, yeah, multiple layers of textures, animated textures, the whole nine yards can really help bring a scene to life. And so, by now, for those of you who've been following all of my tutorials, there's probably maybe 250 of them in there. I consider that essentially the minimal amount you need just to get grounded in the basics with Blender. I mean, it's that involved. And you probably know by now, in fact, you're probably pretty aware of Blender as to what its capabilities really are, but there's a lot more to it. And like I mentioned in previous videos, we're going to start doing more theme-based animations, some based on stories, and we'll do real-time building as we go. But then you don't even have to worry about, you know, knowing the basic tools. You can just kind of use them as we go. You just, so, because you, you're getting pretty well grounded. In fact, a lot of you can just take off and run with it now and create whatever things you like to create. But you can see it's quite the mighty little uh, program. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of dig it, right? Okay. All right. Well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.